So what do you think is the secret to being a brilliant proofreader? Is it a professional knowledge of grammar? Is it an ability to spot a typo at 10 paces? Well, actually, neither of those things. The secret to being great at proofreading is to be really methodical, to treat the proofreading process as just that, a process. Let's look at some strategies that you can adopt right now to maximise your chances of success as a proofreader. First of all, know that slow is the secret to fast. Now, if you're working in a busy, fast-paced environment, it can be tempting to believe that there must be some hack for proofreading quickly. In the next lecture, I will talk about some tips for speedy proofreading when you're really up against the clock. But honestly, that should not be the norm. Because here's the thing, when it comes to proofreading, there really are no shortcuts. And the secret to proofreading efficiently is to take your time and to be methodical. If you rush your proofreading, it will be a false economy because you will miss errors. And if you've only got time to proofread a document once, then make that one read really count. Now, some of the proofreading strategies I'm about to show you may sound like they'll slow you down, but they will save you time and embarrassment in the long term, I promise. For example, if you're proofreading your own work, let it sit for a while. The brain naturally fills in the gaps and reads what it thinks is there, not what actually is there. So you need to trick your brain into seeing the document as if someone else had written it. So if you can, if you've got time, leave it overnight and come back to it with fresh eyes. Proofreading requires concentration and can be very fatiguing for the eyes, which can cause you to miss errors. So if you're proofing a long document, take regular breaks. The brain's tendency to read what it thinks is there is one reason to get a second or third or fourth pair of eyes on any document, especially if it's something you've written yourself. Even if the document didn't originate with you, chances are you won't catch everything. Remember, most professional proofreaders are probably going to miss 10% of typos, so if it's a really important document, bring that final percentage down by getting more eyes on the thing. Switching up your environment can help you focus on catching errors. Proofreading well takes huge amounts of concentration, so go somewhere quiet where you can proofread uninterrupted. And this is true if you're reading your own work or someone else's. One good reason to find a quiet spot is to be able to read the document aloud. Reading work aloud is a really effective way of catching errors because it helps you spot when a sentence isn't quite right. And it interrupts the brain's natural tendency to skip over words and miss mistakes by reading what it thinks is there rather than what's actually there. Next, always proofread on paper. This is the case whether it's your own work, but especially if you're proofreading someone else's work, and especially if you're being paid to proofread someone else's work. In fact, any serious client would expect you to read a printed copy. Remember what I said in an earlier lecture that technically it's not possible to proofread on screen because the word proof means a printed out copy. But that's not all. As I've said, proofreading is very tiring for the eyes and that's particularly so if you're reading on screen. So if you only proof on screen, you're massively increasing your chances of missing errors. Reading with a ruler, placing it under each line of text as you read, will help you focus on your document line by line, which, yes, will slow you down, but it will concentrate your mind and prevent you from scanning, which will up your chances of catching errors. Something we'll be talking about later in the course is the benefit of checking individual elements separately. For example, reading all the headings together, all the graphs together, and so on. In fact, if you're looking to save time and only have a matter of minutes to proof a document, Focus your energies on the elements that stick out, like headings and subheadings. The bigger the font, the more likely your readers are to spot a typo. If you're proofing your own work and you know you have a weakness or uncertainty, spelling certain words wrongly or missing apostrophes, let's say, or if you know that the author that you're proofing has similar weaknesses themselves, be on the lookout for those weaknesses. You could even do a separate read just for apostrophes or spelling, whatever. In the course workbook, you'll find a checklist of things to read for to remind you what you should be looking for. For example, to read all the headings separately or to check for particular weaknesses. 
as I say, be methodical. If you're the person responsible for inputting the changes, be just as methodical about that. Use a highlighter pen to highlight each change as you've made it, to make sure that every change you've caught actually ends up changed in the final document. This sounds time consuming, but it will actually save you time in the end, especially if you're working on a long, complex document, because it'll help you keep track of what you've changed and what's still left to do. Then, when you've input all your changes, print out a fresh copy and check this new proof against the marked up highlighted proof. Not only to double check that you've made the change, but importantly that you've made the change accurately and not accidentally introduced any errors. This is actually a time-saving strategy because it allows you to check just the changes you've made rather than having to read the whole document again. Finally, a technique I picked up when I was working in the super busy economics team of an investment bank, the final glance test. Just before we were about to hit send on our biggest report of the quarter, we'd print the document out and turn each page over slowly, glancing at each one in turn, letting the eye hover briefly over headings, graphics and the bottoms of pages. So why did we do this? Well, you know how you always spot an error at the precise moment you click send? At the precise moment your brain has stopped seeking out errors? Well, this technique was a way to replicate that rested brain before hitting send. The point was not to think too much, because doing this allowed us to pick up on any glaring typos in headlines or problems with the layout that you can easily miss when you're focused intently on the detail of a document. So remember, being methodical and taking your time are absolutely the key to successful proofreading. But what about those times when you really don't have time to give your document a proper proofread? In the next lecture, we'll look at some strategies for making do when you're in a real rush.